Hey, Shalom, Maki, I'm Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kakadash. Send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to all of you, all of you out there. This is another GMS Dallas in class. And uh, we felt it was appropriate since uh, uh, Han uh, Hanukkah is here, uh, start coming in tomorrow evening, um, that we uh, kind of go over that story and talk about that story of our forefathers, uh, Jews Maccabees and his brothers and that family and them standing up, you know, uh, against the heathen, you know, standing up for uh, the law, statutes, commandments, the preservation of our nation. And they are mighty heroes that we, we you know, we all look up to in faith and, 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 and willingness to, to fight to the end, you know. So coming into this uh, season of, of Hanukkah, it is a time of victory mindset, a time of, of, of uh, celebrating victory over our enemies. And uh, even though we're still in a battle right now, you know, we're still in the battle a lot right now, you know, in, in like manner fight, fighting for the salvation of our people, you know, we, we, we have joy knowing that there is a promise that was made, you know, and through that promise and through the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made, we have, a, we have hope for an opportunity up out of here. And so, you know, what better time than now to read a story like this, you know? I wanted to open up with uh, its first mention in, in the book of John 10 and 22, if, if a brother could read that. God, this is John chapter 10 and verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. Yeah. And Yahweh Shah walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. Yeah, man. So there, even during this time, you see when the, um, when the Lord was on the scene, when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, the, the celebration of the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah was prevalent, prevalent and relevant. And so this is something that the, our people uh, understood and knew and um, something we'll talk about today. And so I want to uh, get this piece real quick just to kind of set a backdrop of the time that we were in uh, during Hanukkah. You had Alexander the Great who had defeated the Persian Empire, right? He, uh, when you read First Maccabees, the first chapter, it talks about him dying uh, very young and passing on that empire to his four generals. When you read um, in the book of Daniel, the 11th chapter, that really kind of goes over what's known as the Syrian Wars, a series of battlings and fightings between two of those generals' families, right? The Seleucids and the Ptolemies. Mm -hmm. During the time of Hanukkah, the Seleucid Empire had control and dominance over what we know as Judea, mm -hmm. all right, which is a region in where the uh, Israelites dwelled at that time, okay? So there's these political strains over this region. It is a hub of traffic. Merchandising is always passing through this region from east to west. So it is a critical spot that all empires wanted to control. That region of Israel. Was, uh, it's always the reason why it's hostile because a, it's a hotbed of trade which controls kingdoms, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm going to read this. This is a, a worldhistory.org you go, or you can go to ancient EU, all right? Worldhistory.org or ancient EU and I'm in an article called the Maccabean Revolt. I'm in a, in, a, in a place called the Maccabean Revolt and I'm skipping down to where it says the Seleucid takeover. All right, and this, this reads, in 198 BCE, all of the goodwill of the Jewish community towards the governing body turned to hatred as the Seleucid Empire defeated the Ptolemies, taking control of all Judea. As the Seleucid Empire expanded, so too did their notion of Hellenism, all right? So their notion of Hellen Hellenism was more aggressive. Mm -hmm. The Seleucids under Antiochus III controlled much of the Arabian Peninsula, forcibly converting many of its new populace to Greek culture and religion. And the intent in uh, and the intent in that the hegemony, the hegemony, continued as they took Jerusalem. So if you're following along now. And you and you're taking this seriously. You can type in map of the successor kingdoms. You can type in Seleucid Empire map. 
so you can get a view of the region for which they control. If, I'm, uh, if I may add, there was a nice little commentary on the uh, on that verse that we read, John 10 and Absolutely, yeah. That uh, David Guzik has. I, I figured it'd be good to bring out as well. Bring it out, bro. Okay. Um, so when you so this is David Guzik's uh, commentary mm -hmm. on John chapter ten, verse twenty-two that we just read. Yep. Specifically that verse. Um, it says under the portion where it says the feast of dedication. It says this is also known as Hanukkah, celebrated which celebrated the cleansing and rededication of the temple after three years of desecration by Antiochus Epiphanes, king of Syria, in 164 BC. It says, after Antiochus attacked, and if you wanna make any points, you know what I'm saying, stop, but it says, after Antiochus attacked Jerusalem, he instituted a reign of terror upon the Jews of the city. And um, here's some notes, it says, Antiochus stole millions in gold and silver from the temple treasury. Antiochus said that possessing a copy of the law was punishable by death. Wow. Antiochus said that circumcising a child was punishable by death. Under Antiochus, mothers who did circumcise their children were to be crucified with their children hanging around their necks. Mm -hmm. wow. You can read about this all throughout the uh, Maccabees, man. Yeah. Yeah. How vicious of a rulership, you know. Antiochus had and in like manner way that's why people are thinking Biden might be another one of those Antiochians you know what I mean? he, 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 he coming with that type of energy you know but we're gonna see mm -hmm. okay so you know go, going back into this article just to kind of um, continue to land back on what the uh, uh, brother I now just brought out there in the days of goosey commentary it reads it says um it says, Antiochus wanted to Hellenize the Jewish community. His aim was to remove any features of Judaism that, uh, that could define it from the Greek religion and other accepted monotheistic <clears throat> religions. Because of the benefits of the Greek culture, which included economic integration between all of the Greek states, all right, joining in with the beast, right? And the pressure of, re uh, and the pressure of, Regime, many Jewish people accepted Hellenism, mm -hmm. right? So that process of indoctrinating people, making them drink the wine and rat, you know what I mean? All of that type of stuff was being perfected all the way early in the Greek rulership, right? It's happening now. And it's definitely happening now. Okay. It says the already strained relations between the a pious Jewish people that did not accept Hellenism and the Seleucid Empire uh, were shattered when Antiochus Epiphanes adopted his father's policy of universal Hellenization but took it to new heights. <laughs> As Epiphanes looked at Alexander the Great of Macedon and aspired to have his name in the history books alongside him, he needed to dis distinguish himself above his predecessors. The best way to do that, he thought, was to enforce that Greek culture on all the Jewish on all of the Jewish uh, population to enforce the Greek culture on all of the Jewish population, a feat that had so far been elusive. He accepted a bribe and approved the takeover of Jason of the Onedian family to the now de facto client position of high priesthood. Okay, and you can read about all about this the, the whole full story, you know, in uh, uh, Maccabees, right? It says Antio Antiochus and Jason's power as the high priest over Jewish people to build a gymnasium and to and just outside the temple, with that strengthening the Greek culture in the heartland of the Jewish community. It was a symbol of Greek Hellen Hellenism, and having it outside the temple showed the Jewish community exactly who was in charge. The Hellenistic idea of the of masculinity was shown in the in the rule that one must be naked to enter gym the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Being naked in public was strictly forbidden under Jewish laws. So any Jewish person that went into the gymnasium violated the laws of the covenant. The state understood this and therefore made it a legal requirement for anybody who could afford it to go to go at least once. So forcing them to break the laws, mm -hmm. right? That's what Esau's doing now. Yeah. For sure. If you want to work, 
you know, then you gotta you gotta break the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They still have it where 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 you everybody get naked like that in the field house, man. You know, the 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 stimulants of the gymnasium. You know, so this is that, that same culture all over again. It says, this was a method of making a state bigger and of greater authority than, than any other religion other than the Greek polytheism. It says, thus many Jewish people uh, fell in line and acquiesced to the regime. Okay? Skipping on down. It says, although many of the Jewish community were at this point Hellenized, the persecution of the Jewish people and the destruction of practicing Judaism United the, the Israelites in Judea. The Israelite people needed someone to lead them. Then when Antiochus sent some of his officers to the town of Modin to lay down his tyranny and enact the oppressive laws that he had enforced, he was met by a local Jewish country priest named Mattathias. This turned out to be very important, uh, important to this meeting. Uh, the the country priest was ordered to fulfill his duty to, uh, to the state and be the first to sacrifice an animal to an altar of an idol. He refused. And when another Jewish man stepped forward to do it, he murdered the officer. Mm -hmm. Tearing down the idol, uh, Mattathias preached, let everyone who is zealous for the law and who stands by the uh, covenant follow me. First Maccabees 2 and 27. The Jewish people had their leader. He and his five sons, John, Simon, Judah, Eleazar, and Jonathan, rallied the Israelite population. In 167 BCE, the Israelite people rose up with Mattathias as their leader. Soon after 167 BCE, the family of Mattathias became known as the Maccabees or the Hammer. They recruited uh, tough Israelite people on the way and began a guerrilla war as they started to take over the northern villages of Judea. They tore down the altars of idols, killed those who worshipped them, many, uh, even many being Hellenistic Jews. Mattathias died in 166 BCE, but just before death, he left Judah in charge of his army. Okay? So that's the backdrop of basically this, this scene that's, gonna, that's leading into these battles between Judas Maccabees, his group of people, and the Greek uh, Seleucid Empire, Antiochus' armies. Mm -hmm. Now if we skip over into 1 Maccabees, the third chapter, it kind of, it's the third and fourth chapter basically give you the list of the fights and the battles that lead into what we understand as Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to read that. Okay. All right. This is First Maccabees chapter three verse one. It says, "Then his son Judas, called Maccabeus, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him, and so did all they that held with his father, and they fought with cheerfulness in the battle of Israel." Uh huh. So verse three. So he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him, and he made battles. Protecting the host with his sword. Yeah, so you know now he he becomes coming a cult like figure, you know, winning battles and these battles they a lot of them they were outnumbered. You got to remember this was guerrilla warfare. Mm -hmm. So Judas Maccabees and his family they knew the terrain, they knew the land. You know, you run up, you get done up. Yeah. If you don't know have the right amount of people, because yeah. we gonna come. Oh, you know, you think this hill is over here, but we know this passageway over here. We can get get behind you real quick mm -hmm. and just slaughter you, yeah. right? So this is what uh, Judas Maccabees is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, was, that was real good at that. That's you know, yeah, yeah. one hundred percent. Yeah, when the, when the same thing happened when Esau came over here, Gad was picking them off, man. No, there's stories of Gad being able to, to shoot ten arrows in a second, precision, and without a saddle, and could slide and have the leg strength to mm -hmm. hold themselves underneath the horse, and shoot from underneath the horse. Damn. Like, Gad was on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to shoot him, he fall to the side. Yeah. Come back up. Yeah. Damn, riding the, the horse. Like, they could go, the yeah. go side to side on the horse. Yeah, riding the horse by itself. Yeah, riding the horse by itself. So you think you just run up and kill him. No, bro, yeah. dude, then move to the side, hitting you like this. You know, 
Damn. So Jake, Jake was warriors, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Continuing on in verse four, it says, "In his acts, he was like a lion, and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey, for he pursued the wicked and sought them out, and burnt up those that vexed his people." Burnt up those that vexed his people. Go ahead. Verse six says, "Therefore, the wicked shrunk for fear of him." And all the workers of iniquity were troubled because salvation prospered in his hand. Mm-hmm. Verse 7. He grieved also many kings and made Jacob glad with his with his acts. And his memorial was blessed forever. Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah, destroying the ungodly out of them and turning away wrath from Israel. Mm-hmm. So uh, anybody that was a whole ass nigga, sellouts, everybody was getting killed. Mm-hmm. Only the pure of heart was being kept. Yeah. Judgment through Judas Maccabees was, uh, you know, flowing through this whole uh, region of Judea. So city by city, they they clearing everything up. Mm-hmm. All right, it says uh, in verse nine, so that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth, and he received unto him such as were ready to perish. Which the uh, scriptures say, if you you know recently uh, you know got married or you know you wor- worried that you're not going to be able to um, you know. Uh, overtake the enemy to go back home. You know what I'm saying? So those that were ready to perish were those that were willing to die for the cause that Judas Maccabees was, you know, was uh, fighting for, which was ultimately um, Israel being a sovereign nation. Yeah. Know? Those that were ready to perish, they were ready to go to war. They were ready to fight for, just like you said, sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Just like today, just like now, right? Mm-hmm. Where you, you got men ready to what? De- declare a testimony. Meaning you you were willing to die for to, for the sake of the truth. Uh, you know? Yep. It says in verse 10, Then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together and a great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel, mm-hmm. which thing, when Judas perceived, he went forth to meet him, and so he smote him and slew him. Many also fell down slain, but the rest fled. Verse 12. So he's scattering their armies. Mm-hmm. Right? Go ahead. Verse 12 says, Wherefore Judas took their spoils and Apollonius' sword also, and wherewith, and therewith he fought all his life long. Oh man, took his sword. He, was, he must have had a dope sword. That's like uh, David. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Took, took Goliath's sword, cut his head off. Yeah. You know, he kept it. Um, it says in verse 13, Now when Saron, a prince of the army of Syria, heard say that Judas had gathered, him, gathered unto him a multitude, a company of the faithful to go out with him to war, he said, I will give me a name and honor in the kingdom, for I will go fight with Judas and them that are with him who despise the king's commandment. Mm -hmm. So he made him ready to go up, and there went with him a mighty host of the ungodly to help him Mm -hmm. and to be avenged of the children of Israel. Verse 16, And when he came near to the going up of Beth Haran, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. Mm-hmm. So it looks like, based off what I'm reading here, that uh, this guy Saran, you know, pretty much was a part of the, uh, you know, the Greeks, but they were on the side of the of the uh, the solutions, and mm-hmm. um, they were pretty much trying to go and get vengeance for the Israelites, the the Hellenized Israelites that, were, that Judas was killing too. Is no, that- so basically they were being. When you understand the story, they mm-hmm. were being, uh, they were working for the Solution Empire. Mm-hmm. They thought they were big enough to take down the Maccabees right. because the Maccabees didn't have a large number. Mm-hmm. So they think they they was like under the assumption that they could take pride troops of eight nine thousand men and just mm-hmm. go take them down. Mm-hmm. And they're just losing every single time. All of these different generals that are stepping up, these little minor generals stepping up mm-hmm. to the plate. Right. They get they get dusted. Mm-hmm. So. Like during the time of Rome, Rome didn't just come get you. They sent out one of their mm-hmm. side groups to go to go handle you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's it's not working. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Con. Verse sixteen it says, and when he came near to the going up of Beth Aran, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. Verse seventeen, who when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Judas, How shall we be able, being so few? To fight against so great a multitude and so strong. See that? Mm-hmm. So, so I was like, dang, it's a lot of them, Judas. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Right, it says, 
how shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Uh -huh. Unto whom Judas answered, It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few, and with the most high, the power of heaven, uh, it is all one to deliver a great multitude or a small company. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of the host, but strength coming from heaven. Yeah, so he basically is like, look, man, with the most high, we, we can defeat any number. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says in verse 20, They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us, and our wives and children to spoil us, but we fight for our lives and our loss. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord, Yehovah Shai himself, will overthrow them before our face, and as, you, and as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Yeah, so so Judas is like he's giving a speech of all speeches, mm -hmm. locker room speech of a lifetime. Man, God, God, you know, yep. you don't fear. We both protect this. Oh, you know? <laughs> you know? we got our wives and our kids behind us, man. Both sides with us, man. They needed to hear that, you know. And we have to make sure to uh, tell ourselves that during this time, you know, you know, the eyes may seem be may seem like they're against us, but hey, we got y'all watching y'all shot with us. Uh, ain't no, ain't no power that's gonna overcome that, man. Ain't no device, no crafty counsel, none of it. You know? Go ahead. God. It says in verse twenty-one. It says, "But we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore, the Lord Himself will overthrow them before our face." I was gonna say, you see, our, our forefathers stood for something, man. Yeah. Like, like, absolutely not, man. Yeah. Like, I know it's too much, but nigga, nah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. You got it. Um, it says, uh, verse 23. It says, um, Now, as soon as he had left off from speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them, and so Saran and his hosts were overthrown before him. Go ahead. Verse 24. And they pursued them from the going down of Beth Haran unto the plain, where were slain about eight hundred men of them. Uh, where were slain about eight hundred men of them, and the residue fled from fled into the land of the Philistines. Go ahead. Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren, and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them. Mm -hmm. and, and so much as his fame came unto the king. And all nations talked of the battles of Judas. Go ahead. Now when the king Antiochus heard of these things, he was full of indignation. Wherefore, he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. All right, so hold up. So now I'm going back to uh, <coughs> ancient.eu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to skip over to chapter 4. But now you're going to read chapter 4. All right, and so when you go back to ancient.eu, continue to read underneath the subsection of rebellion of the Maccabean revolts. Skip down to the second paragraph. It says, Antiochus underestimated the severity of the rebellion and the size and strength of the Israelite armies. Instead of crushing them with the full force of his armies, he set his less effective generals uh, on them. Yep, Judas Maccabees, a wise and courageous mil military general, defeated them with consummate ease. Antiochus was made to look foolish. As a response, he set out to exterminate the Jewish population in Judea. Antiochus set forth his most glorified general, uh, uh, Lysias, and around 60,000 soldiers to try and do just that. Okay, so let's skip over to uh, chapter four. I think so, that's what I want to do. Let me see. Yeah, four and one. Four and one. Yeah. First Maccabees four and one. Then on the Gaius. Then took Gaius five thousand men, and a thousand of the best horse horsemen, and removed out of out of the camp by night, to the end he might rush into rush in upon the camp of the Jews and smite them suddenly. And the man of the fortress were his guard, were his guides. Now then Judas heard thereof. 
he himself removed in the valley of man with them that he might smite the king's army which was in, in, in Maus. While as yet the forces were dispersed from the camp <clears throat> in the means in the mean season came Gorgias by night into the camp of Judas, uh, Judas like him. And when he found no man there, he sought them out in the mountains, mm -hmm. where he said, These fellows flee from us. But as soon as it was day, Judas showed himself in the plains with 3,000 yeah, 3, men, who nevertheless had neither armor nor sword to their minds. And they saw the camp of the heathen, that, is a, that it was strong and well harnessed, and compassed around about the horsemen, and these were experts of war. Then said uh, Judas to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their assault. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with an army. And, there, and now therefore let us cry unto the heavens, if preadventure the Lord will have mercy upon us, and remember the covenant of our fathers and destroy the host before our face this day. Mm -hmm. All right, quick precept. Uh -huh. uh, this is going to be the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. And it reads, uh, sorry. Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know, so, you know, that was, you know, just made me think about that when, when Judas mentioned acts of old. Yeah. You know, in the midst of imminent death, what it looked like to be imminent death, he was like, look, remember what the Lord did in, in the time of Moses in the Red Sea, how he delivered us from the hand of Pharaoh. Yeah. You know, the Lord is the Lord is able to deliver a uh, few, you know, by his power. That's yeah. that's the Lord likes magnifying his power like that. Just mm -hmm. show forth, look, I, in the hands of a few, I'm you know, I'm gonna glorify it, it glorifies his name doing that. Yep. You know yeah, and we can and we can go into those same things. Like with uh uh, these things being written a full time for our learning. We, when we in these sticky situations, we be like, you remember Samson, man? Bro, mm -hmm. Samson was through, but he came, Lord came through. Mm -hmm. we, we can go back on those accounts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same way, same way Judas did. You know, remember David? Remember this? Remember that? Now we got more accounts yeah. to fall back on. That's you know what, what I'm saying? That's what we're stating in First Maccabees 2 and 51 down. Yeah. He gave example after example yeah. of all those times they were. In imminent danger, but even they were delivered. Yep, just like I said, uh, well, who had called on you? How about Shemiah Shai and been confounded? Mm -hmm. right. Nobody, you know. That's right. Undefeated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was my episode. Okay, let's go back. All right, back in First Maccabees four and verse eleven, it says, "And so all the heathen may know that there is no that like that there is one who delivered and saved Israel." Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them, wherefore they went out of the camp to battle. And they that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. So they joined battle, and the heathens being discomforted fled into the plains. Mm -hmm. Howbeit all the hindmost of them were slain with the sword, for they pursued unto Gazara and unto the plains of Idumea and Azrathus and, and uh Jemena, I think I'm saying that right. Jemnia. Jemnia, it's like it. It says, so that there were slain of them upon a thousand, uh, three thousand men. It's like yeah, it. so they're basically able to go and duck off into the hills, yeah. come back, guerrilla warfare approach, surround them, blowing trumpets, woo, making it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Making them like scatter. They can't get their battle cries mm -hmm. together because this, the noise of Judas's army is just completely throwing them off. Yeah. Kind of All of the, their yeah. normal regiment formations, they fucking up their roof, their formations, and the the Maccabean armies are just running through them. They know how to move quick. Yep. They know how to go in, in, get in and out. <laughs> so they in and out, just decimating these different Greek armies. Mm -hmm. All right, and so it's just getting worse and worse and worse to to the point to where Judas is freaking famous. People thought that he was the savior. People thought he was the Messiah. Yeah. It was it was getting to the point to where it's like this is the Messiah that we was all looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Not for real. Yeah, and really it was, they thought that he was fulfilling the prophecies. Mm -hmm. Like okay, this, this is him. This is him. This is how much ass he was kicking. Yep. <laughs> Judas was to where people with unbelievable <laughs> armies that he's defeating. Mm -hmm. Like. 
take three, four thousand men and slaughter up ten, twelve thousand men. You know what I mean? It's ridiculously smart. Like, knew how to get in, knew how to get out, knew when to engage, knew when to run. So they would run for a minute before they would engage some of these uh, armies. So when the armies, so that's why they was like, man, we don't know, we can defeat them, shit. We tired, we've been fasting, we've been having us hiding in these rocks. Yeah, and, you know, they... So they go into Judas, like, worried about their own physical, like, I don't even know if I'm strong enough to fight these dudes at this point. But imagine going into a war and you in the middle of the fight, you fast. Yeah. Like, because you're having to just... Yeah. Well, you have to just duck off in a hill for two days yeah, and, just, exactly. and, and, and wait. And so then they the herbs. Yeah. yeah the so they just stay in the mountains, stay under the brush. Yeah. This army's walking through the lands. They don't know that Judas Maccabees literally already surrounding them. Yeah. Just off, they ducked off in the hill somewhere, eating grass, waiting. I was saying, then when you fast, then you, 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 also, you, more, you, more in a, you in more of an angelic state yeah. when like, you fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as as as, as tired and as hungry and all, of, they needed to be pure for the Lord to use them. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was like, I can't have you. Was, I can't have you eat uh, uh, beef jerky and all this. Yeah. Why you yeah. finna fight yeah. my yeah. battles? No, no, no. I need, I need you right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you hangry. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hangry. <laughs> you rip up the whole house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. So let's we we can go back and we can read um, and continue on. So, I'm, you know, I just want to give a little bit of that. Kind of, what verse is it? You got it. You in right. verse, uh, what? 16. 16, right? Yeah, yeah. you just, just hit it. Just keep reading. All right, verse 16, it says, This done, Judas returned again with his host from pursuing them and said to the people, Be not greedy of the spoils, and as much as there is a battle before us. So, Gorgias and his host are here by us in the mountains. But stand ye now against our enemies and overcome them, and after this ye may boldly take the spoils. As Judas went, as Judas was yet speaking these words, there appeared a part of them looking out of the mountain, who when they perceived that the Jews had put their host to flight and were uh, burning the tents, for the smoke that was seen declared what was done. When therefore they perceived these things, there were sore afraid, and seeing also the host of uh, Judas in the plains ready to fight, they fled every one into the into the land of the strangers. Yeah, the strangers. so Judas was keeping them sharp. He was like, "Hey, hey, hey! Don't don't trip. We still got. They still here. You know, we can have to fight at any moment. You know, go ahead." Then Judas returned to the spoils to spoil the tents where they got much gold and silver and blue silk and purple of the sea and great riches. Blue now, silk, very hard to come by. Very, very expensive commodity. Just because of that dye is hard to get. Yes. Very rare. Go ahead. Verse 24. After this, they went home and sung a song of thanksgiving and praised the Lord in heaven because it was good, because his mercy endured forever. Thus Israel had a great deliverance that day. Now all the strangers that had escaped came and told Lassius what had happened. Who, when he heard thereof, was confounded and discouraged because because neither such things as he had as he would were done unto Israel nor such things as the king commanded him were come were come to pass. Right. So Israel is is taking W and his God at Antiochus Epiphanes is taking else. Right? Go ahead. The next year therefore uh, therefore following Lessius gathered together three score thousand choice men on foot and five thousand horsemen that he might subdue them. So they came into Idumea and pitched uh, their tent in Bethsura, and Judas met them with 10,000 men. And when he saw the mighty army, he prayed and said, Blessed art thou, O Savior of Israel. So they, yep, so they in the land of Idumea. <laughs> uh, they met them with 10K, 60K first 10K. Man. It says, it says, who did is pour the violence of the mighty man by the hand of thy servant David and gave us the host of strangers into the hand of Jonathan, the son of Saul, and his armor bearer. Mm -hmm. shut, up the, shut up this army in thy hand of thy people Israel and let them be confounded in their power and horsemen. Yeah, man. So, you know, he, we draw strength just like you read about in Romans, the 15th chapter, 
from the lessons and the stories of his forefathers. You know, and we in like manner got to do that same thing too, man. Mm -hmm. When did when we when we get discouraged when we come into a situation? Mm -hmm. Now imagine Judas Maccabees. Imagine yourself in a room, and it's you and it's five other people. Man, five on one. <laughs> And you walk in there with no doubt in your mind that you got to beat the brakes off. Yeah, they, they, they stuck and, in there with you. And, 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 yeah. and, and, and yeah. it ain't the Henny talking. Yeah, they, they stuck in there with you. And it ain't, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it ain't the Henny talking. You know what I mean? That's what Bruce Lee said. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yep. a, that's what Bruce Lee said. Yep. He said. He said when Bruce Lee was in a, movie, in a room, he said, you know what? I don't fear that I'm stuck in a room with y'all. You should fear that you stuck in a room with me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And, like, and, and commit and commits to do work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so imagine that situation of having five on one uh, against you, and you have supreme confidence that the Lord, your power, is going to help you get through the situation because you know you're fighting for His will. That's what the Lord wants. Yeah, the Lord yeah. does not want no. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna. The Lord, like, look, have supreme confidence. I'm on your side, and look, the scripture say nothing. Uh, who, if, if if the Lord be with me, who could be against me? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Now, right. This is literally putting that in your mind, like literally walking in an scenario situation. Like, look, how about? Yeah. I don't care if I'm locked in a prison. I don't care if I'm yeah. my head in the guillotine. Even if my head get cut off, the Lord is with me. Yeah, the Hanukkah is the it's the ultimate victory celebration. It's when you get into your victory mindset. Yep. You know, cultivate that victory mindset during these next few days, during this next week. You know, remember your forefathers, man. Remember the faith that they have and emulate that. Because that same power that helped them help you. You know, it's not time for Esau to win. It's time for him to lose. Man. That's right. I'm saying that's why, and that's why this, uh, that's why this account is so uh, inspirational. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because even with uh, with the situation with Esther, yeah, bro, when the when when we be about to be completely wiped out, bro, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, <laughs> heavy. Yeah. it's heavy. You got Hanukkah, you yeah. got Purim, yep. Then you got Passover, man. man bro. It's all victory, 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 bro. Man. So you know we we exclaiming victory, you know, through the spirit power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah over this place, and that's why and that's what that's why faith is so important. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you can go back and read those accounts. Get the spiritual aspect of it. Yeah. Hear, hear about what happened. Knowing that's coming for you. It's all it's all neatly packaged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In in the scrolls. Yeah. That's the comforter. Yep. Yeah. That's Yahweh Shah said, look, I'm gonna bring the comfort. Uh, I'm gonna deliver the comfort. That's it. That's it. That and having an understanding, you know. I had a quick precept. Mm -hmm. Uh Second Peter chapter three, verse one and two. This this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of the What were the prophets talking about? They were talking about the glory of the Lord, mm -hmm. the prophecies, what's coming. You know what I'm saying? Getting you ready. Opening the door for repentance. Salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Kingdom. How much more now? Mm -hmm. I'm saying, how much more now? We always talk about how we, people always say it's been the end of the world. This, no, 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 no. Everybody ain't had that red button they can stand on. They ain't they, ready to butter right now. You gonna have to deal. Okay. Yeah, all that putting it off and no, 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 no. Mm -mm. It's not for a museum. It's for your ass. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. All right, so let's go back to Second Maccabee. I mean, First Maccabees four, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to First Maccabees four. All right, back in verse thirty-three, it says, well, thirty-two, it says, make them to be of no courage. And cause the boldness of their strength to fall away. And let them quake at their destruction. Mm -hmm. Cast them down with the sword of them that love thee. And let all those that let all th those that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. This is the real thanksgiving. Straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up. That's it. Let's go. Let's talk, man. Verse 34. So they joined battle. And there were slain of the host of less of... Uh, Lysias, about 5,000 men, even before them, were they slain. Now when Lysias saw his army put, put to flight and the manliness of Judah's soldiers and how they were ready either to live or die valiantly, he went to Antioch, I think I'm saying that right, and gathered together a company of strangers and having made his army greater than it was, he pursued 
to pur- he purposed it's like the purpose to come again. So he went and got mercenary armies from the heathen roundabout. That's what Esau's doing. He's going to Moab. He's going to Ammon. He's going to 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 these uh, other nations and 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 and, and, and try to work a work to still to remove our blessing. Mm-hmm. Right. Same thing, man. Esau's always been doing this. Go ahead. He purposed to to come again unto Judea. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomforted. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Upon this, all the hosts assembled themselves together and went up into the Mount Zion. And when they saw the sanctuary desolate and the altars profaned and the gates burnt up and the shrubs grew and the courts as in a forest, or in one of the mountains, yea, and the priest's chambers pulled down, they rent their clothes and made great lamentation and cast ashes upon their heads and fell down flat to the ground upon their face and blew an alarm with the trumpet and cried to twi- cry towards heaven. Can you just imagine, like, just like just think about the road or think about, like, uh, walking dead and how the city looks, you know, there's shrubs coming out the yeah. streets, you know what I'm saying? Building got weeds growing out the windows. Mm-hmm. They looked at the temple and the temple was absolutely just desolate. Mm-hmm. Shrubs growing where the altar is, yeah. weeds. Yeah. Probably yeah. had animals up in there, just little critters running around and stuff. They it was like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. It had been it had been marked up with uh with pig's blood. They turned it into a a uh, harlot temple, yeah. so it's yeah basically a strip club, <laughs> and so it was turned out. Damn, it was turned out. Yeah. It was turned into a club. Yeah. Basically, uh, yeah. If I uh, there was a little bit more on that commentary on the uh, yeah about the temple. Yeah, I wanted to get a little bit more into it before mm-hmm. we went to that point, and then we finish it off about how the temple had to be cleansed. Kind of. But um, what verse you at? Uh, let's see, verse thirty, uh, forty-one. Read down to uh, read down to forty-eight. Huh. Verse 40. and then get your commentary out. Huh. All right, verse forty-one it says, "Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So he chose priests of blameless conversation, such as had pleasure in the law." Who cleansed the sanctuary and bare out the defiled stones unto an unclean place? Mm-hmm. And when as and when as they consulted, so the elect for for that time was, was chosen, right? Go ahead, verse forty four. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings which was profane, they thought it best to pull it down lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore they pulled it down and laid up the stones in the mountain. Of the temple in a uh, convenient place until there there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Until there was a prophet that was to come, to, to come and, and let them know. Okay, this is how we're gonna move forward. Go ahead. Verse forty seven. Then they took the whole stones according to the law and built a new altar, altar according to the former, and they made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hollowed the courts. Right. So they knew. They knew. They knew. All right, it was, this was just a statement being made, right? Go ahead, keep reading. It said okay. that, if I may remember, uh-huh. it said that it said that, and they laid up stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done to them. So they, they took the stones; they didn't destroy them mm-hmm. or anything. They took them and they laid them up. It makes me think of. It makes me think of. And they mentioned he mentioned the prophet. It makes me think of Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Yeah. When he mentioned, like, look, we are the lively, you know, through the spirit, we are the lively stones. Mm-hmm. We are the stones of the tabernacle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's heavy, bro. Yeah. So because we, like, were, we, we, we were defiled and then we were cleansed. <laughs> right? And we are those stones. Wow. I just never caught that, you know, back then. So right? Like, dang. But get the commentary that you have real quick, I Con. Um... Yeah, when we were uh, reading up earlier, we were talking about how how desolate the temple was, and uh, a couple more of the bullet points. It says, under Antiochus, the temple was turned into a house of prostitution. Under Antiochus, the 
altar of burnt offerings was turned into an altar unto the Greek god Zeus. Yeah, or Jupiter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ju this they call it, it's Jupiter Olympus. Mm -hmm. We read it in the Maccabees, but Jupiter is Zeus. It's mm -hmm. Roman. Yep. Roman is Zeus, I believe. And, yeah, yeah uh, Zeus. Greek, Greek is Jupiter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Amun Ra. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I was actually researching it the other weekend, so it's all the same shit. Mm -hmm. Dang. Yep. Uh, it says under Antiochus, pigs were sacrificed upon the uh, great altar, and under him, eighty thousand Jews were killed, and an equal number were sold as slaves. Um, you see here. So yeah, that was pretty much the point on that one. Okay. So, yeah. mm. All right, back in First Maccabees four and verse forty nine, it says they made also new holy vessels, and into the temple they brought the candlestick. And the altar of burnt offering and, the, and of incense in the table. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lit, they lighted sloppy, that they might give light in the temple. In the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the, the vows and finished all the works which they had began to make. Mm -hmm. Now on the fifth and tw uh, the twelfth day, 20th, 20th, 20th sloppy. 20th day of the uh, ninth month, which is called the month of uh, Kaus, 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 Kaus. Mm -hmm. in the hundred. Uh, and we're in that month right now. Mm -hmm. We're in that month right now. All right. Go ahead. It says in the hundred and fortieth and eighth year, they rose up beat times in the morning and offered sacrifices according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings, which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it, even in that was it dedicated with songs and cit citrons and harps and cymbals. Mm -hmm. Verse 55, then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the, the God of, the, uh, of heaven who had given them good success. Mm -hmm. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with glad gladness and sacrifice to and sacrifice the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Mm -hmm. They decked also the forefront of the temple with cr uh, crowns of gold and with shields, and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus was there very great glad gladness among the people, for that the reproach of the heathens was put away. Boom! So the reproach of the heathen for that moment was, was put away. I'm gonna go back to ancient. Dot eu or worldhistory.org skip back down to that section that called called rebellion and, and go all the way down it says judah was uh severely outnumbered however the familiarity of judea was a huge advantage for the israelite armies using the slight of hills and superior knowledge of the area they outmaneuvered the Seleucids and slowly they picked them off finally they came to uh, finally, they came to a battle. Judah had gathered around 7,000 uh, Israelite rebels, but still they were outnumbered by at least five to one. As Judah stood there uh, looking at the masses, so the story goes, he prayed to the Most High for victory. The Israelite people overcame the massive difference in manpower to secure an almost impossible victory over the Seleucid Empire and over Antiochus. After the feast, Antiochus armies, uh, Antiochus armies were devastated. They met again uh, with Judas's armies. They met again when Judas's armies was at the gates of Jerusalem, but it was a much shorter battle. The Seleucids were bereft of hope as Judah drove the enemy out of the holy city. The Jewish army had defeated Lysias. Uh When Judah and his uh, brothers went to the temple, he saw the destruction and the defilement that Antiochus caused upon it and was overwhelmed with grief. Mm -hmm. All right. First Maccabees 4 and 36 through 40, which we just read. On uh, It says on December 25th, uh, 165 BCE, the months of work <laughs> clearing and cleaning the temple was finally rededicated to the Most High. The celebrations continue for eight days, as known to this day as the celebration of Hanukkah, right? And uh, it wasn't long after this period uh, when Antiochus actually uh, died, you know, sometime after that. Mm -hmm. Let me see what else is this. 
They sit on that. They say everything is is so so. They say Hanukkah is Christmas because they say Christmas, Christmas is supposed to be. That's what they call it. They call it Hanukkah. They say it's pretty much like they say it's pretty much Christmas. It's they could yeah they got it all confused. Mm-hmm. They blended a whole bunch of different uh, ideologies and said it was Jesus' birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's supposed to be his birthday and all that. Yeah, it just depends on it just depends on who you ask. Yeah, yeah it depends. Yeah, it depends on who you ask, man. Yeah. And as to show you how, you know, even how Judas Maccabees was deified in, in a way, you know. Mm-hmm. But, then, you know, you can imagine how those stories kind of got crossed up mm-hmm. and everything in that time period, you know. Mm-hmm. You want to finish on that? Go. Okay. Yeah, we can finish this uh, last bit of uh, First Maccabees 4. You know what? Hold that. Read this right here. Oh, this is Second Maccabees 10 and 1. All right, it reads. Now, Maccabeus and his company, the Lord guiding them, Recovered the temple and the city, but the altars which the heathen had built in the open street, and also the chapels, they pulled down. And having cleansed the temple, they made another altar, and striking stones, they took fire out of them, and offered a sacrifice after two years, and set forth incense, and lights, and shoe bread. When that was done, they fell flat down and besought the Lord that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy, and that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous or barbarous nations. Now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple, on the very same day it was cleansed again, even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is past noon. And they kept the eight days which with gladness, as in the Feast of the Tabernacles. So they did it like the Feast of Tabernacles, mm-hmm. right? This is why. Keep reading. Remembering that not long before they had held the Feast of the Tabernacles, when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts. So that year, they had they, the, for the Feast of Tabernacles, they was hiding in, in dens like beasts, you know? Mm-hmm. So they was like, you know what? We're going to have this celebration you know, we're going to set it up. We're going to do seven days. Cause what is the Feast of Tabernacles? How, how long is that celebration? It's the same amount of time. Okay. Well, you go through. They, they set up tents. Yeah. Right? You set up tents and you have a celebration. Yeah. Right? That's right. So that's why it says, as in the Feast of Tabernacles. It doesn't mean it's the same thing. You know? Mm-hmm. It's, mean, it's, like, it's just like I, uh, I described to my kiddos. I said, when you see as, when it says as in, it's like saying like. It's like, man, I went to the fair and rode the roller coaster. It was just like Six Flags. You wasn't there. You know, I wasn't, it, it, I, it, I was at the fair, not Six Flags, but I'm likening it. So I could say, yo, I was at the fair and I rode a roller coaster as in or as if I were at Six Flags. A simile. See that? And then you'll see that in the scriptures and people will get confused. It's likening something when well, you right. see that right there. Okay? So that, was the, that was the end of the lesson nugget. Yeah, you go. <laughs> so if you, if you made it to this right. point in the lesson, congratulations. You got a nugget. <laughs> 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 I tell you what, it's something school, bro. That's something that stuck with me. They like, say the simile is a comparison using the words like, like or as. Yeah. Like, that's literally yeah. something that's yeah. stuck in my brain. Mm-hmm. Like, I already yeah. know, like, that's what it is, bro. There you go, champ. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's actually, let's just go back to that. Just finish reading. All right, continuing on, verse 7, it reads, Therefore they bear branches, and fair bowls, and palms also, and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing this place. They ordained also by a common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. So they made it a, they made it a holiday. They declared, like, you know what, let's, let's do this. Go ahead. Continuing on, verse 9. And this was the end of Antiochus called Epiphanes. Now will we declare the acts of Antiochus. Am I saying this right, Peter? Uh-huh. Who was the son of the wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the wars. Mm-hmm. We can stop there. And you know, if you want to go read this, it's going to give you a brief summary of everything that went down. And you can definitely go read it there in Second Maccabees, the tenth chapter. I highly suggest you go read it. But um, just for the sake of time and everything, that basically was a, the stories around and surrounding the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah, how it came to be. It's a story of victory, overcoming, 
you know what I mean, us defeating our enemies and being able to glorify Yahweh. And by Shem Yahweh Shai, we're going to be able to do that soon. So with that, man, we're going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Kakadash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yaki. I'm out there pushing the word to see the truth. Shalom. 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 Shalom.